It's a big night here on Space Out Radio, of course. All the big UFO news coming on down. We still got Grant and Nicole hanging on out with us. What do you got for us, John? Yeah, well, I mean, needless mm-hmm. to say, I mean, um, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard about this one story that everyone seems to be talking about, but it's actually kind of like ca- ca- catching on. But um, I don't know if you guys heard about this um, this large um, uh, prank that went on in France. Do you guys hear about this? No, uh, I'll, 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 I'll send you. I'll send you the link right now, Dave. Um, but basically, this this guy went all out. This guy, like, 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 this guy's a special effects artist. Like, he went all out and like did like a full on, um, you know, a full on uh, alien display. Like, you know, he had a costume and a ship and everything. And um, and so um, and so my my question basically, you know, came down to you know for something like this where the guy you know wasn't taking an, a known event and blowing it up, right? He wasn't taking a random event and turning it into something it wasn't. He created a completely fabricated event, right? It was a big production thing for him. There was an ending to it where he basically said, yes, you know, this was me. You know, this is look at my ship and so forth. Have we have we reached a point of maturity, lo- maturity yet where that will go over okay yet? Or is that still like so like so for Paul, like just like so bad news. Like it, it, it we're still decades away from being that um, – that mature yet i don't know about anybody else i'm not uh, i yeah, i think it, my, honestly, well i would say that this kind of stuff is actually very popular because everybody always believes that ufology is going to be solved by the next ufo sighting that comes along so we had the jerusalem video you have all these videos when everybody gets the video and then it, everybody it passes around everybody's shares it or whatever and then as someone yells hoax and everybody runs for the hills and then they go okay wait for the next video and next video or the next sighting comes on did you see that sighting and everybody gets all excited and then somebody poo-poos it and it goes on and that's i think one of the problems we have is everybody thinks it's the next sighting instead of the fact that we may already have the answers so it's very easy to hoax people in terms of a new video because everybody's looking for the new video to share to uh be on the the disclosure event yeah, and I agree. And I think it's almost worse in cases where you have videos that were real and they sit and, and linger for a long period of time. No one successfully shoots any one of them down. Maybe there's some you know hard questions posed that couldn't be answered, but it sticks how it is. And it just it just sits there forever. And then it fades out of people's memory and it becomes known as as a bad data point. It becomes known as a bad hoax file when it wasn't. It just no one ever called it out as good. It only gets called out as bad or you hear nothing. It, it, it very rarely does anything ever actually get like called out blessed as this is actually good, you know, good data. I mean, even even in even in in the cryptid world, like you guys don't, you have, have, have a huge problem with that. I mean, we don't we don't have any declarations of this is this. We agree. This is consensus. We agree on this. Yeah. And that's it comes to that opposition thing. So people will say the Tic Tac videos were all blurry. And they, why, does anybody ever take a good photo? And then you get the Meyer photos from 1975. And they say, that's totally phony. I mean, look at that. It's clear as a bell. You, you just can't win. I mean, it's like it, it's either too clear or it's not clear enough. Yep. Yep. No, nope, totally agreed. Totally, totally, totally agreed. Totally agreed. Um, what else you got for us, John? Yeah. So, I mean, so needless to say, you know, this whole, this whole, um, you know, Gillibrand bill thing is, is, is a hot topic and would have been a hot topic completely on its own without what the DOD is doing, just because of the fact that we're seeing, you know, I believe that there are now five sponsors on the bill, uh, on the amendment. Um, you know, there's, there's more and more people talking about it. I mean, I can't believe I, I have a list. I'll include in my notes of, of all the different, uh, periodicals that have written about, um, um, Grant looks like he's selling furniture. Um, uh, um, um, <laughs> sorry, I got, I got totally distracted what I was talking about. Um, uh, oh, but but you basically you have you have a number you have a number of different um, periodicals that are are writing you know uh, good serious articles about this Jill Brand uh, um, uh, amendment and what's in it and and they're breaking it down at different levels with their perspectives and so you're seeing different perspectives different you know and some of them are military slanted some of them are history slanted some of them are political slanted and it's actually getting wide coverage and so that to me is just um, uh, I gotta admit, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little surprised and I'm pleasantly surprised. I was a little worried that this amendment might kind of die on the vine, and I'm, I'm really happy to see as, as much um, interest and support for it 
as 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 we are we are seeing. Um, now, I, mean, I know none of you are really kind of you know necessarily uh, you know into the American politics, but um, I mean, considering what we've seen happen to other amendments, were you guys actually did you guys have any confidence that this this latest amendment would actually be the one that went forward? I hadn't come across any opposition to that portion of the amendment, so I wasn't really Correct. like in fear of anything that was going on. I mean, the the change from what was it, Arrow to Astro, you know, I mean, that didn't seem to be like any source of contention or anything. And now it's <laughs> AOIMSG, which, yeah, it was just terrible. <laughs> these, all these amendments and all these things that they proposed in the last couple of months all seem to be something where they don't break down to be Republican or Democratic issues. Mm -hmm. They don't seem to have had any opposition to any of them. People just right. sort of tack them on and it's not like... Uh, you know, Correct. socialism or communism or, you know, capitalism. Yes. Is like but unfortunately, still the reconciliation process of, of bringing the House and the Senate, uh, the House and the Senate bills together, um, things do end up falling onto the floor. Right. And so you do always have to be very mindful of, you know, when one side actually comes out with really strong language um, and it's like, wow, like you guys actually did your homework. Like and her and her her amendment is beautiful. I mean, it's really well. It's so well written that you could actually use it as a framework, start actually building out an organization like that's uh, that's how well i mean that's so, whoever helped her with that they've built large orgs before like that that's a well flushed out plan that she's put together uh, yeah, well, and whoever that, helped her well that was the idea that melon had helped that's what i heard right that may be that's true, what yeah. i was hearing well I, I, heard, I heard melon i might have had some help um I, we heard that um that some of the language in it appears to have been lifted from um from an article that bob uh, uh that science bob wrote uh, a couple months ago um, so I, I think she just, you know, I'm sure, I mean, like, like a, a senator at her level has um, a, a huge staff that, that support her. Right. Yeah. And a yeah. lot of times those those staff are top notch people. Right. So, yeah, we, so she's yeah, got we a whole team of people. I think we have to remember that congressmen and senators don't write any of their bills. They're always written for right. you know, right. staffers. So maybe maybe we can start a rumor and say Science Bob was. Involved well, in the background. Well, but no, but the other... about this grant, what's interesting about this grant is that this is one of the problems we have in the U.S. is how things have evolved is now over in time, over time, now pretty much the only people that write bills are the, are the actual vendors, right? So it's like, yeah. so like the, 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 you know, the armed services guys will get Lockheed to actually write the bill, right? So they'll actually write the bill for them or, or, you know, gain or, or, you know, or, um, you know, or Paxil or you know, whatever company, like they'll actually write the bill for, and the law, lo the lobbyists or the legislature, like, well, it'll save us time. So yeah, we'll take the work, but who writes a UFO bill for you? Nobody. So those are labors of love. Those are things that people are actually still writing themselves. Yeah, I, I, I give you an example uh, when I w w spent a lot of time on Reagan speeches as to how things got in Reagan speeches. And Ooh, uh, Deborah, no, what was her name? Uh, one of his big speechwriters. She talked about the fact that a State of the Union address has been drafted 30 times and that everybody has to sign off on it. So CIA, defense, everybody has to check off on it. And every single word is checked. Every every little thing is checked in there. And she said it was, uh, she had a swear word for it. She says, when when the thing was finally done, she would leave the office because the phone would come off the hook. And it was like, what the hell do you think you're doing? It's like people <laughs> screaming and yelling at her. And, and people don't realize how many times these things are drafted and how everybody has to sign off on it to approve it. So yeah, there's so many people in the background. People don't realize how or yeah. orchestrated this whole thing is and oh, the senator man. takes the credit for it but there's people in the background that are doing it oh for well, sure, and that's for sure. Where, to bring up like i brought up earlier again uh kit green commenting on the language that's in this bill Mellon has commented on the language that's in this bill and kind of signed off right. giving his approval right. and, and we don't know if these are people who are or just intelligent well-read people on their own that are reading it and and commenting on their own or is one of them like like put off for someone calling up his buddies and saying nudge nudge you know wink wink hey you know we we all you know we should all support this because this is good for all of us right it doesn't have to be conspiratorial it can be just you know friendly you know uh you know uh bannerment sort of a thing right but it's it's um you can certainly see why it'd be in everyone's benefit to um to speak up if you have something positive to say um, but you know, I mean, I, I would say that the, you know, the, the, the last thing that's, you know, probably the, the biggest, you know, interesting issue is, is just what the, what the DOD tried to do. Um, and, um, 
And, you know, I, I was like, I was listening to, um, I listened to a couple of different shows on it today. I was listening to you, you know, you guys talk about it a little bit and, you know, um, and, you know, there's a lot of people that feel that, you know, what this was, was this was the DOD essentially, um, you know, putting up their dukes and, 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 you know, and, 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 you know, um, you know, starting to fight back as, as far as, um, as far as what's going on. And, uh, you know, I, I can I can see how someone could take it that relate to take that understanding. And for anyone that, that isn't, uh, you know, uh, really um, aware of what I'm talking about, essentially the DOD released in a press release today that they were already putting together a program that looked kind of similar to to Jill Brand's fantastic program, but with a, a lot of stuff missing and a lot of holes in it. And uh, and basically, you know, tried to present it like, you know, hey, look, we're already doing this sort of a thing. And um, there's a whole bunch of debate as to why they would be doing that sort of thing. And, um, you know, to a certain degree, I think that, you know, we shouldn't always read negative things into it. It could be that they're trying to cover their 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 backsides. Right. Um, you know, they're they're trying to get start, start getting in some of their framework requests in early in a, in a framework like this so that they actually walk up to the negotiating table in a better position. Right. I mean, it may just be marked, you know. Um, you know, kind of sportsmanship on their part. Um, I don't know if I would really take it necessarily as them being really, you know, uh, sh intentionally shish kebabbing the whole program. Because if you were doing that, you wouldn't come up with an acronym like that. Because you'd want that you'd want the DOD program to succeed, right? You'd want the DOD program to succeed where the congressional program didn't, and so you'd want the DOD program to actually have a a a a, a, a acronym that was actually like catchy, right? And so the fact that they picked such a ridiculous, I mean, a ridiculous. I mean, I look. I come from an industry that did PCMCIA, okay? PCMCIA was an actual acronym people were expected to remember. No one did. And so I get it. I understand acronyms, but this this these are ridiculous. Like these are like. These are so bad. These are so bad that we're lucky that UFO topic isn't like big news item because people on late night television would have a freaking field day on this stuff. I mean, like, I mean, it is it is ridiculous the way the 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 acronyms are set up. It's it's um, um so I, I totally understand why, why. why But so my point is that I understand a lot of what people are saying, but I think there's a good chance that this is more um more sportsmanship on the part of, of DOD basically trying to, you know, get themselves onto a better, into a better positioning place on the table. Um, you know, I think it was certainly them, you know, you know, you know, firing back a little bit to a degree, but I don't think it necessarily should be seen as, um, you know, this super negative, you know, um, you know, deriding sort of thing. I think, I think if, if, if for some reason, if their proposal took caught wind and got, and got dominant to support over Gillibrand. Yeah, that'd be awful because what they what they wrote in their in their proposal, the limited thing that's there, it's 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 it pales in comparison to what we have in the bill. But um, but you know, I don't know if I would take what they did as so much as so negative as much as it was just you know just political you know political marksmanship. You know. But as, as I pointed out before, um, we would have never have thought it as being negative until Lou Alzando came out and hammered it today. So he's basically turned the, the tables upside down on them. But it'll still be a consciousness thing because every day my mother says, on, on the news, and she watches a lot of Fox News, she goes, oh, they were talking about UFOs today on the news again. I can't remember the guy's name. I mean, I think. And every day it's the same story. They were talking about UFOs on the news today. And so even though people aren't picking up the acronyms and I pick it up, they'd, it's right. this idea that new, it's in the news cycle all the time. Almost every day they're they're running a story and people like my mother who really don't know what's going on are picking up that something's going on, this UFO stuff, yep. something's going on here. Yep. Yep. No, and it, it gets it gets the words get on people's minds and they they think about them and, and they 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 permeate yeah. them into their own mindset. And it's it's an important aspect of, of the normalization of all of this. I mean, I mean, we're seeing it right now with the way that, you know, with different groups are basically, you know, adopting different, um, you know, naming conventions and becoming more comfortable with calling things like Dave and I were talking about the other night about the fact that Professor um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 Kaku. Kaku um, Michio Michio? Michio thank, Kaku, thank you. Yeah. Michio, Michio um, you know, is actually like entertaining the idea of off world entities now, right? In public talks. I mean, yeah. he has been for a couple months now, right? But that's like a, that's a, you know, when he first started doing it, that was a big leap for him. And there's been a couple people at his level 
that have started making that leap. And I think as time goes on, you'll see more, you'll see more of those people make that leap and then that will shift down. And then that group yeah. will then push a little further out on the edge of the, of the surfboard. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and so you have this kind of tiered approach and, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, the truth of the matter is, I don't think this closure is terribly sexy, but it, it, it it's pretty interesting if, if you like if you like the nuances of, of 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 the data. I mean, it's it's certainly it's certainly very fascinating to watch. That that's why I said we. I always point out that we are no different than any other social or political movement. We think that because it's an important subject, everybody should drop everything they're doing and, oh, and join us. Right. But whether it's African American rights or gay rights or gay marriage or whatever, it was something that they made a lot of bad jokes about and made a lot of uh, bad movies about and stuff like that. But in the end, every in the end, people talked about it, and in the end, everybody decided what was the right thing to do. And I think it's the same thing here. That's why in 2017, when it finally broke, everybody said, "Oh yeah, I knew that already." Same as when gay marriage. I remember when gay marriage came in, and I mean, Cheney's daughter. This whole thing where Cheney was this arch conservative guy and he just sort of accepted. I went, holy cow. You know, it was like it went from absolute sin into the point like nobody really cared. It was like, OK, mm -hmm. so what? They, they want to get married. Let them get married. And that's mm -hmm. what I think is the same thing's going to happen with UFOs. It's just going to change and nobody's going to realize, like, when did it actually change? And everybody's going to go, well, I don't know when it was. It was like a little while ago. I, was, I don't know when it changed. <laughs> it, consciousness changes slowly, but it is changing. Yep. Yep. No, and I agree. And I think, I think, I, I think everyone has different kind of cutoff points. I mean, for me, um, just for me personally, for me, it was the, it was the, it was the, um, it was the, um, the, uh, the press, uh, the talk that Lou Elizondo gave in March of 2018 at a science conference. And it was specifically the Q and a that got that you got to see if you watched it live, but that Q and a got cut later for the actual production. So you only got to see that Q&A if you watched it live and watching him live, watching him answer the questions. That was the first time for me. I was like, whoa, like, you, like you can take like, this is this is you can take this to the bank. Like this is they're they're actually going to admit it this time. That's amazing. Right. But I think every everyone has a different moment like that. Everyone has some some period that happened to them that was that that flip extension, whether it was a sighting, whether it was, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, going out and having coffee with one of them, you know, whatever, you know, whatever your, you know, whatever your relationship um, uh, dynamic was um, with with the entity. But um, but yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I agree. I think it's all, well, just, the, it all it, what, you, what you see. You're mentioning the one, the other big one where you get these moments is when Lou Elizondo went on Fox and they asked him about the crash saucers. And he said, I believe he uses that. He always uses the I believe. Yeah, I believe. I can't say for sure, but I, I would believe. And that was a moment where you go, holy cow. Like, you know, like you can't believe that that was actually said. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Although, you know, I got to say, and, 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 you know, uh, if, 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 uh, if Lula's on over watches this, sir, I mean, this with the, with the most due respect, because I think it's cool, cool. I've done this with my own friends and I, I think it's cool when you do it, but I thought it was very interesting. I, I think we saw an interesting, um, angle into, um, how close, Elizondo and Christopher Mellon have gotten in that essentially when Elizondo was giving one of his talks and he he started introducing Christopher Mellon like he, Chris Christopher Mellon was going to come on in a couple minutes and the way he buttered this guy up I mean the way he talked this guy up and down like like this guy this guy if you needed him to make water he could do it for you like that's how good Christopher Mellon is right and like you could hear him like build it up and it was fascinating to listen to him do it because you know you could tell that this that they've become a very practiced team with this and it's not it's not it's not um fictitious it's not it's not it's not like it's not like that it's 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 honest but it, you can tell that they've gotten quite a um uh quite a pairing going up and, and we're probably presenting quite well together all right John <clears throat> excuse me John Hudson and the Unbiased UFO Report, thank you for joining us with Grant Cameron and Nicole Sackage as we start to wind down here on the show. We're going to be talking UFOs again tomorrow night because this is a hot-button topic. We got to get into it. We What's need the name to of that acronym about? again? What's that name of that acronym again? AOI MSG, or if you're looking on our store soon, SOR MSG. <laughs> That's the way we're going to do it. We're going to make a new T-shirt, S-O-R-M-S-G. And, yes, I wish it was burrito time, little Marky Spender in the chat room. But it is not. 
but the UFOs will continue. Grant Cameron, Nicole Sackich, much love to each of both of you for hanging on out. Go in the distance, and the fedora-wearing John Hudson. Always a good time when you bring your fedora and the UFO news into SORHQ.